Hello, welcome to the next section, Client-Server Interactions. In the previous section, we replaced our dummy data provider with a real data provider. Now that we have data persistence, we're ready to entrust our users with the ability to interact with our application. The first thing we'll do is to implement the add, update, and delete methods for our Web API's quiz controller. We'll adhere to RESTful conventions and good practices using the proper HTTP verb for each scenario. Post to create, put to update, and delete to delete. Remember the region RESTful conventions methods in our quizcontroller.cs file? It's time to update its contents to support CRUD operations on quiz entities. Here's the new code. We updated our already implemented get method so that it will be able to handle requests pointing to non-existing items. Although this is not strictly related to what we're doing now, we took the chance to do that while we were there. We then implement the put method. Post and delete methods to make them actually perform the expected server-side operations to add, update, and delete a quiz instead of throwing a not implemented exception like they were doing. We add the from body parameter attribute to the put and post method signatures. We did this to tell .NET Core to fetch the quiz view model sent by our Angular app in JSON format from the request body. We used the adapt feature from the Mapster ORM library at the end of the put and post methods to return a new quiz view model to the client built upon the created modified quiz. Also, note how we didn't use Mapster to populate the quiz entity from the quiz view model in the post method, as we've chosen to manually treat, check, and assign each property separately there. We did that to gain more control over these changes, separating the properties that the user is allowed to modify from those who should be set from the server side only. Now that our server side quiz controller supports the four basic CRUD functions, we can upgrade our Angular client to make use of them. Let's start with making our users aware that they can create their own quizzes. Navigate to the client app, nav menu folder, and open the navmenu.component HTML file and append the li element to the end of the existing ul element. Needless to say, we also need to update our Angular app's router module to add the relevant root accordingly. Open the app.module.shared TypeScript file. First, we add the reference to the component that will handle it. Also, add quiz edit component. And then add the root module. Saving the file with these changes will immediately raise a TS to compile warning, as there isn't a quiz edit component class out there. We have fixed that by adding a quiz edit component TypeScript file within the quiz folder and replace the whole code. As always, we're also adding the quiz-edit.component.html template file. Also, we're adding the code for the quiz-edit.component.css stylesheet file. Now save all these files. The first thing to note is that we used the quiz edit component name, not quiz create controller. The reason we did that is easily understandable by looking at the source code. We'll use the same component to handle either the create a new quiz feature with a put request to our quiz controller or the edit an existing quiz feature with a post one. Doing that will save us a tremendous amount of development time at the cost of some if-then-else conditional directives in the component class and template files. We already know most of the Angular classes, services, and decorators that we used here. Inject, HTTP client, router, activated root, and so on. No need to repeat ourselves here. We already know why they're there. We added three different UI buttons to our template file, but only two of them will be visible at the same time, depending on whether the component works in edit mode or not. We did that trick using the ng-if directive, 
which is another extremely useful tool in the Angular template syntax shed. As we can easily see, it can be used to conditionally add or remove any elements from the DOM as long as we feed it with any property or expression returning a Boolean value. The next step is to activate the edit mode. To implement such behavior, open the quiz.component.html template file and add the code. Once done, add the onEdit method implementation to the quiz.component TypeScript file. The code should be added just below the constructor method of the quiz component class. Last but not least, we need to add the edit root to the app module class. Open the app.module.shared TypeScript file and add the path. Before going further, we can take the chance to add a delete quiz button to our quiz controller and bind it to another event handler method that will take care of the client server interactions required to actually execute the delete action. Let's start with creating the button in the quiz.component.html template file. We can put it just below the edit button. Once done, add these lines for onDelete method implementation in the quiz.component.typescript file, right below the onEdit method. There's nothing new here except for the good old JavaScript confirm technique that we threw in to prevent users from accidentally deleting a quiz. With all these new additions, our Angular-based SPA should be able to show at least a glimpse of its true potential. Let's perform a full surface test before adding questions, answers, and results to the loop. The new Create a Quiz Nav menu link is there, just as expected. By clicking on that, we will be brought to the Quiz Edit view. As we can see, the Quiz Edit component is working as we would expect when the Edit Mode switch is set to False, prompting the user to create a new quiz. Let's fill the fields with some sample data. Once done, click on the Create a Quiz button to see what happens. Here's our new boy. It worked. We can now create new quizzes. Let's see whether we can edit the existing ones as well. From the Home view, click on the quiz we just added to access the quiz view. From here, we can test whether our Edit and Delete this quiz buttons work. Clicking on the first one will bring us to the Edit Quiz view. We can try to change some string values here and see whether the changes are reflected in the database. We can even place some debug symbols within our client side and server side code to see how the request will be issued by the Angular app, received by .NET Core, and eventually handled within the delete action method of Quiz Controller through our EF Core's application DB context instance. When we're done, go back to the quiz view and click on the delete quiz button. The delete confirmation pop-up should appear to check whether we're really sure about that. Click on Cancel first, then click on the Delete This Quiz button again, and click on OK to let the app work its magic and then bring you back to the home view. From there, we should be able to see that the newly created quiz is gone for good.